Hi, welcome to this ongoing video in the Aruba Quick Start Series video series. Uh, in this video, I'm going to focus on Aruba Fabric Composer, and actually, I'm going to actually deploy uh, a data center fabric using Aruba Fabric Composer. Uh, as you can see here, it's version 6.0.0. Uh, so this is the environment that I have. It's a two-rack environment uh, with two spine switches, top of rack. Each top of rack environment has two top of rack switches to perform uh, and to act as a HA logical switch for high availability. Uh, and of course, we can see the deployment procedures here on the left. I'll go through adding a fabric and discovering the switches and then adding those switches into the fabric and assigning roles to them. We'll do some basic NTP and DNS wizard configurations. And then of course, we'll run uh, the VSX wizard the leaf spine wizard to configure the leaf to spine interfaces and then the underlay and overlay wizard to configure BGP on the underlay as well as the overlay, although OSPF is an option for the underlay. And then I'll finish it up with running the EVPN wizard. Now I'm going to choose the auto uh, configurations. These are the most basic configurations, but uh, users have a lot of configuration knobs in here. So as you can see here, if they wanted to deploy VCX, they could do that manually. Uh, if they wanted to do a point-to-point -point link, like I'm going to do in this link for the Keep Alive, or they could even do a loopback link if they wanted to. Uh, of course, the Leaf Spine Wizard also offers the ability to manually configure them uh, in more detail. But obviously, the, the whole power of Aruba Fabric Composer is helping the administrator deploy these uh, in a best practice type scenario. So I'm going to follow the auto configurations for most of these. Uh, at this point, we will, of course, ensure that BGP on the underlay and the overlay is configured, that the uh, VXLAN interfaces uh, are up between the two VTEPs. And then we'll move on to the server facing configuration in the next video, in which I'll start by adding integrations into ILO AMP and vCenter environments. Let's go ahead and jump into the environment. So this is the uh, initial login screen for Fabric Composer. So let me go ahead and just log right in here. It'll bring us to the initial dashboard. Now there's been no configuration, so there's really not a whole lot to display here. There's no switches in the fabric, no attachments, no hypervisor information. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into getting this configured. So we're going to start by uh, actually adding a fabric. I'm going to call this the TME Lab fabric. I'll give it a time zone here. And now that there's an official fabric that's been built, I'll go ahead and start adding the switches into that fabric. Now, these switches all have uh, basic out-of-the-box configurations. Um, there has been a management IP address added to these switches. Uh, I did it manually, although that could be uh, that could also occur, you know, via DHCP. Now I'm uh, providing uh, credentials for AFC to log into the switch, but now these bottom two lines here is AFC is actually going to uh, automatically create a new admin account called AFC underscore admin. And so now I'm just adding a new password, which will be used for that AFC underscore admin account. Okay, we can see that the switches have been discovered. Um, it's giving me a healthy butt indicator. And if I hover over them, they just haven't been assigned to a fabric. Uh, so that they've uh, they've all been discovered. So let's go ahead and actually continue this guided setup on the right and I'll just assign these switches to a fabric. I'm going to select all and then I will delete the two spine switches and under the roll line here I'm going to choose leaf, click add. So now all of those switches they know, uh, Aruba Fabric Composer Solution knows that those are officially leaf switches and these are officially our spine switches. I'll go ahead and click apply. And now we can see that the switches have successfully been assigned to a fabric. We can see that they synced automatically and we can see that they're all showing as healthy. So I'm just going to continue following the guided setup wizard here on the right. We'll do some basic NTP configurations here just to show you how this works. I'll just give it a name. I'll choose the uh, NTP server in my environment. 
Uh, now you do have uh, authentication knobs if you want. I'm not, I don't have those enabled, but of course you have a number of knobs that you can work with that. And I can deploy this to the entire fabric or I could select individual switches in the fabric if I wanted to deploy it to particular switches. I'm gonna do the entire fabric and I'll click apply. Uh, we'll go down to the DNS configuration now. Same thing, give it a name. I will give it a uh, domain name to look for and tell it where the DNS server is. And same thing as with NTP, I could deploy this to the entire fabric or to individual switches. I'll do the entire fabric. I'll go ahead and click apply. Okay, uh, so now we can move on to the VSX configuration. So let me just jump into the switches here and we'll see leaf switches here. Whoops. VSX hasn't been configured. Now we've got a number of ways we can configure them. I'm gonna do the easiest way and the recommended way, which is just to do the automatic configuration. I'll just give it a name here. Now I'm going to leave the enter switch link uh, uh, timing uh, timers at default. Now, in this case, I'm using a point to point link. However, uh, customers do have the option of using the loopback if they wanted to. Of course, the loopback uh, wouldn't show up, come appear as showing up until they finish the uh, full configuration. Uh, for keep alive settings, I'm going to leave these timers as default, as well as the link up delay timer. And you can see the uh, system MAC address range to be used is automatically populated for us. And I'll go ahead and click apply. Now we can see here that it's discovered the leaf pairs in both racks and it sees there's leaf 1B and 1A and leaf 2A and 2B and it's configured the VSX configuration for those switches. I could go back to that switch and take a look at the VSX status and we'll see that it's in sync and operational. So VSX is automatically configured like that, very easy. Let's go ahead and just go to the next step. So we'll do the leaf spine configuration here. I'm going to automatically uh, generate the leaf spine pair, but of course you could manually configure each of these interfaces if you wanted to. Give it an IP address range to use and go ahead and click apply. Now you can see it's discovered all the inter switch links between spine A and spine B. And of course, each one is connected to four switches. So we have four of those inter switch links that have been configured. We can see all the connections have been established. If I go back to my switches, take a look. At my spine switches, we'll see interfaces one through four are all now up and they all have IP addresses applied to them. Okay, following down the uh, guided setup on the right, we'll do the underlay overlay configuration next. You'll see it takes us here to this underlay tab screen. And under this underlay tab section, I will click add under actions. Give it a name. Now, of course, we could do EBGP or OSPF. I'm going to do EBGP. And of course, we have a, a couple different options with regards to the uh, ASN types of deployments. I'm going to do a dual ASN deployment, as we see here. Uh, Transit VLAN, this is going to be a VLAN uh, to be used for IBG peering between the VSX pairs of switches. I'll give it an IP subnet range to be used for those uh, environments. OK, 
Okay, so now that's the underlay deployment. I will, as I'm here, I'll click on the overlay tab here and deploy the overlay. I'm going to give the uh, loopback IPv4 network address range here. Uh, as as before, I'm going to keep the keep alive timers at default. Click apply. Okay, let's jump into the switches and take a look at the switches. So I'll log into the spine switch and let's take a look at the BGP underlay. So I can see that the underlay configuration has been configured and we're, all of our links between the spine one and its connected switches are all in an established state. You can go to spine two and we'll check the underlay for that also. And all of those are in a, an established state. Now let's check the uh, overlay. So we'll do show BGP uh, layer two EVPN summary. So here's the EVPN portion of the configuration and we can see all of our configurations are established. And we'll take a look at the uh, EVP and summary on spine two, and we can see all the interfaces are in an established state there. So let's jump back into the uh, guided tour and we'll go to the EVPN configuration. So in this section, we're going to just click next. We'll just give it a name here. And here we're going to uh, specify the uh, VLANs to be concerned about here. So we'll do 10, 20, 30, and we'll give it an identifier to be used as a base uh, layer two VNI. We will give it a route target. And you can see the system MAC address range is automatically populated for us. I'll click next and then just simply click apply. And we can see the uh, configurations that, uh, e that Aruba Fabric Composer has applied to the LEAF 1A, 1B, 2A and 2B switches with regards to VLANs 10, 20, and 30. In fact, at this point, we can log into our switches, take a look at our leaf switches here. And we can see that we have our VXLAN tunnels that are now created for us. Let's jump back into the uh, dashboard configurations. So let me go to the dashboard of Aruba Fabric Composer. At this point, we've got the fabric configured. And so you can see that we have switches in our fabric and we can see the fabric inventory in our environment with regards to the number of MAC address attachments and LLDP neighbors that's being seen, number of ports that are available. But we don't have anything else with regards to server facing or host facing information in here. I will detail the server facing configurations in the next video in this series. Uh, but before we go on to that next video, let me go into the visualization screen here and I will click on the uh, network screen and we'll get a visual representation of what we just deployed. Uh, I'm going to change this from a custom to a leaf grid and I've got four leafs, so you can see how it kind of splits it out and moves the leafs out for me. Of course, I could move the spines around if I maybe wanted to put the spines on the bottom, if that's how I preferred it. Uh, I'll keep them on the top. And so this gives us a decent representation, visual representation, of course, of the fabric that we just deployed, leaf 1B and 1A. When I hover my cursor over each of these devices, of course, I can get information about these devices. Uh, next, of course, in the next video is we'll add the host facing configurations, which will allow us to actually get a visual representation of the servers that are connected into this environment, as well as adding the uh, benefit 
of being able to have Aruba Fabric Composer automatically add these uh, server-facing VLAN configurations directly onto the switches automatically. So thanks for attending this video, and please uh, check out the next video as uh, uh, deploying the uh, server-facing configs. Thank you.